So I'll try to log into the server. So if you try to log in and you see this, it means that something has changed in the server. And in this case, this is because you reinstalled the server. So the keys have changed. So you have to delete them from your local computer for you to log in. So to do that, you just use SSH, SSH, key gen, dash R, and the IP address, and then enter. That's going to remove it from our computer and then we can log in again so control l will clear this sc the screen and then i can try to log in again so when you see this accept by typing yes and then enter and then enter the password for your server there we go so we are logged in you can see we are logged in as root on this machine so you can see there have been some failed login attempts. So the first thing, let me show you how you can generate the key and add it to your server. So for me to generate the SSH key, I need to do it on my local computer. I can open a new git bash window. And then I'm going to generate the keys. So you need to know where you are putting the keys. The first thing you may want to do is to create a folder where you're going to store your SSH keys. So the SSH keys come in pairs. There's a public key and a private key. The private key is the one that you use to log in. The, the public key is the one we add to the server so that we can log in with the private key. So first, I will need to create a directory where I can keep my keys. To create a directory on Git Bash or on Linux, I can do mkdir. And then I'll add dash p and I want to create it in my home directory dot ssh inside of the dot ssh directory I will create another folder let me just call it contabo this will create a directory called that inside of this directory inside of this folder so it's going to create that folder inside of that folder in my home directory so if I press enter the directory has been created. If you go to your home computer, if you go to your home directory right now, you're going to find there's a inside of this directory, there is another one called Contabo. So inside of this folder, so I'm just using directory or folder, it's the same thing. So inside of this folder, this is where I want to generate my SSH keys. To generate my SSH keys, I can just do, so I'm just going to copy, I don't want to type. So if you come to this post, and you can just go to blog and you're going to see this post is there as one of the recent posts. So I'm going to generate my SSH key and to generate the key, I've already created a directory. Now the next step is to generate the key. So I'm just going to use SSH keygen and that, and I'm going to explain it. So I will come back to my local computer, the git bash running on my local computer, and then I will paste that in there also need this let me copy that so i can just select it and click paste and it's going to get pasted here so ssh key gen will generate our key and dash t will generate a key of this type dash f this is where you tell the system the name of your ssh key we created this directory inside of this directory i want to store my ssh keys so i'm just going to call them ssh okay that's for my ssh keys you can name it whatever you want and once i do that i can just press enter oh let's see what the mistake is control l to clear the screen and i want to see okay so the mistake is i have this extra one here so i'm just going to remove that there and we can generate the key again so when you're generating your key you can add a passphrase a passphrase is like a password for your key if somebody else gets your your private key they will not be able to use it if they don't know the passphrase so that's why it's important to add one if you want to add one you can add one but i'm just going to press enter and when you press enter it means you not you will not add a passphrase so i'll press enter again to generate the key so if you go into your computer right now inside of this folder you're going to see there are two keys there there's one called SS shk and another one called sh k.pub this is a public key that is added onto your server and this is the one 
that you use for logging in after adding this one. Next time if you're creating another SSH key, you can give it a different name and you'll find all of them inside of that folder. So you can just give it a give your key a different name and they will be stored inside of that folder. All right. We've generated the key. The next step is to add the key to my server. So make sure you copy these two paths and you save them. So you can see up here, I was using this symbol. This symbol is called a tilde. Now the tilde symbol is the same as that, my home directory. So my entire home directory can be replaced with that. That's why I'm using that. So make sure you save the path of this and the path of that because you're going to need them. And every time you want to log in, you will always need this one. So make sure you save it somewhere and you will be using it to log into your server. So the next step, let's add this key, the public key into the server. So I'll come back here, add the public key to the server. To add it, we're going to use SSH copy ID and we're going to need the path to our public key. So I'm going to do SSH copy ID dash I copy and then I'm going to come back here where I've generated my keys on my local computer. Remember, I'm not logged into the server. I'm on my local computer. I'm going to paste SSH copy ID dash I. And then here, I stands for the identity of the key that we want to add to the server. So I'm going to copy the public key from up here, copy that, and then I'm going to paste it there. So now we have our public key. And remember what I said, this entire path for your home user, this entire path for your home user can be replaced with a tilde. Okay, so that's what that means. Just the home path to your home directory, home user directory. Once we have that, this is a identity of the key you want to add to our server. We need to tell the, the server, we need to tell SSH which user to add this key for. So we're going to add this key for the root user and then we also need our IP address. So we're going to do add and then tell the system which IP address they should use. So make sure you add the IP for your server. If you're adding the key for another user, you can do so. You'll just change the name of the user here. Maybe the user's name is now new user. You're adding the key for a new user called new user. You'll put new user there at your IP. Right. So I'm going to press enter. So it's going to try to add the key to my server. So you can see it is trying to see if there are any other keys that are installed. And if there's no other key uh, that is similar to this key, it's going to try to add it. And that's when it's going to try to log in to add it. And that's when you're going to add your password. So just give it a moment and you can see now it's asking for your password because it's trying to add the key for the root user on this server. So enter the password there. So everything was added successfully. You can see it tells you that one key was added. That means that it was added successfully. So now you can log into your server using your SSH key. So I'm going to do control L to clear the screen. The login command is simply SSH and then the user, which is root, the IP address of your server, and then the location of your private key. You can see here there's a mistake. This is supposed to be the private key and the private key doesn't have .pub. So I'm going to rectify that. But just remember the private key that you log in with doesn't have .pub. That's a mistake. Now, if I come back, I can log into my server. If I just do the up arrow to get the last command, you can see I already have everything I need here to log in. The user for my server is that. And the key I want to use is that. Of course, I'll have to delete .pub. And then here, I'm just going to change this to SSH. So I'm going to come up to here and I will delete .pub because now to log in, you need the private key. The private key is a one that doesn't have .pub. So I'm going to delete that, delete this. We need SSH, identity of the key. So you can see here in this example, I'm the root, the user and the IP is there and the identity of my key is in the last bit. There's no problem with this. SSH is going to know how to arrange them to enable you to log in, okay? So SSH is going to know 
that this is the private key that we need to log in and this is a user we need to, to log in with and this is the IP that you need to use to log in. So if I press enter now, I should be able to log into my server. There you go. Now you're logged into your Contabo server. All right. So once you log in with your SSH key, the first thing you're going to realize is that there have been some failed attempts on your server. If your password is weak, at some point, they will be able to log in. So you need to secure yourself. And the way to secure your Contabo server in this case is to disable password authentication. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'll do Control L to clear the screen. And I want to disable password authentication. So to do that, I'm going to use I'm going to use Nano. Nano is an editor you can use on Linux, and Vim is also an editor you can use on Linux. So in this case, I'm going to use Nano to edit my SSH configuration file. That is where we need to disable password authentication. So I'm going to do Nano. Since I'm the root user, I don't need to use sudo. If you're adding this and you have a user that has admin privileges on Linux, you can create a user with admin privileges. And this user can run administrative commands using the sudo command, right? But since I'm the root user, I don't have to use sudo. I'm just going to do nano. We need to edit this file, etc. SSH, sshd, config. I'm going to edit this file. I'll just press enter. So nano is not found. This means that it has not been installed in the system. So I need to install it. I can first of all update the system before I install nano. apt, not apt, but dnf update dash y. So this is going to update the system. And then after that, I can install nano. So I can also just add it as one command here. So when you see this, this is used to join two Linux commands. So I'm just going to do dnf install nano and I can do dash y and then press enter. So this is going to do, do two things. First is going to update my system and then it's going to install nano after the updates are complete. So press enter to continue. All right, that is done. And you can see there nano has been installed. So I'm going to do control L to clear the screen. And I'll press the up arrow to get to this command. So you can use the up arrow to find the last commands that you ran. So I'm going to press enter to install to edit this file again. So if you just scroll down, just scroll down looking for password authentication. I can search for it, but let me just scroll down because I don't want to complicate things. All right, so here we have password authentication. So you need to uncomment this. Here, we need to change the yes to no. Change, delete yes, and make it no. And once you do this, and you save this file, no one will be able to log in with a password. They will only be able to log in with the SSH key. So make sure you save the path to your SSH key. If you need to log in, that's how you're going to log into your server. I want to save and to save, I can just do control X. Control X is, it's like exiting out of nano. So it's going to confirm whether I want to save the changes I've made. And then I'm just going to press Y. Y. And then I'm going to press enter. So now if I open the file again and check, we're going to see that the, the change we've made is still there. Password authentication is still there. So I'm just going to do control X to exit out of nano. And since there are no changes that were made, it's going to exit me out of nano directly. And then the next thing, of course, we need to restart SSH to make sure that we need to reload or restart SSH 
to ensure that the new configuration file we've edited is being used instead of the old one. So I'm just going to do system CTL and I want to reload it, reload SSHD and then I'm going to enter. So after doing this, no one should be able to log into the server using a password. So let me open a new git bash window and we're going to experiment. So I'm here on a new git bash window. Let me just see if I can log in with a password. So if I do this command that allows me to log in with a password, will I log in? I'm going to press enter. And you can see permission denied public key. This means that I cannot log in with a password. I need a public key. I need a, an SSH key to log in. So to log in with our SSH key, we'll just copy the command that we used up here the command that I used to log in. Okay, this is the one. So make sure you copy this and save it somewhere because you will use it a lot. If you want to log in, you can just copy this and run it and this is going to log you into your server. And just as a reminder, this is the identity of your private key, your user and your IP. So let's go and log in. And then of course in Gitbash, you can, you can paste using shift insert. So I'll press shift insert enter. There you go. Now your server is set up to only log in with the SSH key. So even if somebody tries to log in with a password, they will not be able to log in. Okay, so that is done. And in this video, you've seen how you can generate an SSH key, add it to your Contabo server, and then log in with the SSH key you've generated. Let's just go through the steps one last time. Okay, so let's go through the steps once again. So to generate the SSH key, create a directory. You can call your directory whatever you want, but just make sure it is inside of this folder. So create that folder, give it any name you want, and then you can generate your keys and they will be stored inside of the directory that you've just created and then they will use the name that you decide to give them. So this is a comment. I didn't use it, but it's just a comment. It can tell you what the keys are for. You can add your email. You can say these keys are for DigitalOcean. These keys are for Contabo. It's just a comment. You can leave it out. It is not a must. And then add the public SSH key to your server. So once you generate the key, copy the link of the public key and the public key is the one that has .pub, that has .pub, and then use SSH copy ID to copy that key to your server and copy it for the user you want it for and the IP address for the server. And then after that, log in with the private key. So what you should note here is that the private key doesn't have .pub. So don't log in with .pub, remove .pub and log in with the other key. And then after that, log into your server and then edit the SSH configuration file. Change password authentication from yes to no. If it is commented, if it is commented, it will have pound sign in front of it. Remove that and then make sure at the end, just make sure that it looks like that with no. And this is going to prevent logging in with a password and then restart SSH. So restart SSH, of course, you're using, you're using Rocky Linux. I was using Rocky Linux. So that's the one you use for Rocky Linux. Restart SSHD. If you are using Ubuntu, then SSH. But in this case, you will use SSHD if you're on Rocky Linux. And that's it. Just test to make sure that uh, people cannot log in with a password. And to test that, you can just do SSH. You can just do SSH user and the IP to see if they can log in. If you're able to log in, then make sure that you've done everything right. If not, just feel free to reach out. But in the end, you should get an error, permission denied, public key. And then after that, everything will have been configured as is needed. So that's it for this video. That's what you needed to do to set up SSH for your Contabo server. If you have any questions, just let me know.